Hello all, my name is Krishnayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, we'll be discussing about the step-by-step -step process of learning a machine learning algorithm. Now, this video is pretty much important because I've seen many people when they are starting to learn a machine learning algorithm, they directly understand the maths behind the machine learning algorithm and they directly jump into implementation part. But understanding the maths of the machine learning algorithm is not sufficient guys and this how i am saying i'm saying based on my experience when i started my journey with respect to machine learning and deep learning i also used to do the same thing i used to understand the maths behind it and definitely i i i, I knew how to implement that because we had some wonderful libraries that were available in python so after understanding the maths i directly jumped into the implementation part and after implementation just seeing the performance metrics i could come to a conclusion but as time went right as i started exploring more and more as i revised about those machine learning algorithm i actually found out that to learn a machine learning algorithm there are certain process that you need to follow and it should be step by step so this particular video i'll be explaining about that and guys trust me this is from my experience uh, I usually share all the videos based on my experience so that your learning pattern becomes easy. So please make sure that you watch this video till the end. At the end of the video, trust me guys, you'll gain a lot more knowledge into this. So I've noted down some of the points over here, which I'm going to share with you, how you should go ahead in understanding and learning a machine learning algorithms. So to begin with guys, uh, and forget about the practical implementation part right now, okay? I'm just un making you understand how to learn a machine learning algorithm and what are the steps. So definitely the first step over here that I've written, understand the maths behind the machine learning algorithm. That is pretty much true. You need to understand the maths behind the machine learning algorithm when you're starting. And when I say understanding the maths about uh, the machine learning algorithm, that how the machine learning algorithm actually works. And again, I'm telling you, you need not by heart all the equations uh, suppose if i take an example of uh, if suppose in an algorithm there is a concept of euclidean distance right you need not remember the di euclidean di distance formula but understand the concepts is more than sufficient okay and again google is there if suppose you get confused about euclidean distance formula you can actually go and search it over there itself right so understand the maths behind the machine learning algorithm is pretty much important you need to understand those maths in pretty much in depth because from this understanding you can derive all the other points okay you can derive all the other points that is pretty much important now after you understand the maths okay then what you have to see is that how this machine learning algorithms work with numerical and categorical data okay now if i take an example of decision trees right decision trees there is a different concept used in order to do a split for a numerical feature whereas there is a other concept which is used to do a split for a category feature. So this is one type of example why I'm telling you to understand the algorithm, how it works with respect to numerical data and categorical data, right? Now, after you understand this thing, the next step that you should understand is that how that particular algorithm works with respect to text data, okay? Now, if I take an example of naive bias, naive bias will work pretty much well with respect to numerical values, category values, text data, even logistic regression, ev everything, right? How does it work? Definitely, you know, for categorical features, uh, you will basically apply one hot encoding, right? Fine, you'll be getting all the features. But after that, how it will work, right? How, how the whole computation, how the whole maths will work with respect to those kind of features, right? So you need to understand those things also. So text data and definitely for text data also you know the data pre-processing techniques like stemming lemmatization bag of words tfidf word to vec right that is fine that is the uh, text pre-processing part but how that machine learning algorithm gets applied to this kind of information like after the information is processed right after the features are new features are created how this particular machine learning algorithm will apply and before understanding the maths also understand guys you need to know that this particular machine learning algorithm is used for which all scenarios like regression scenarios classification scenarios right there are many algorithms which work for both of these scenarios and there are some algorithms which work only for classification scenarios right the best example that you have is logistic regression nay bias classifier right these are these are classification algorithms altogether uh, and if i talk about regression problem statement there is linear regression right 
Now, if I talk about decision tree, it is used for both, right? It, it can it can be used to solve classification problem. It can be used to solve uh, regression problem also, right? So, based on this, you need to understand for which all terms it is used, right? Which all techniques it is basically used because at the end, right? You will also try to understand, okay, if you know the pattern, how this particular machine learning algorithm works for a classification problem, you should also try to understand how it works for a regression problem. And yes, there will be a minute difference with respect to maths that will be involved in that particular algorithm. And But if you just understand classification, regression part will be a simple, simplest part with respect to understanding those topics itself, right? So this was the third point. The next step that you need to understand is about the overfitting and underfitting condition. This particular condition is pretty much important guys because understanding every machine learning algorithm, if you have not implemented it in a proper way, it will lead to overfitting and underfitting conditions. Okay. Now, when you are learning this, overfitting and underfitting may be due to various reasons, right? And it depends on the type of data set you have. So definitely, when you are learning overfitting and underfitting condition, you will be able to understand about hyperparameter tuning also, right? And when you are learning about hyperparameter tuning, you will be also able to understand about some of the parameters that are specifically used in that particular machine learning algorithm. Now, if I take an example of decision tree, decision tree by default splits all the features, right? Till the complete depth, right? But is it required to go till that particular depth? How many leaf nodes is actually required? Right. So all those kind of parameters can and it is also called as decision tree pruning. Right. And how I am coming to know because I have learned in that particular pattern, I have understood some of the things which has impacted a problem statement and based on that, how to solve that particular problem statement. I've seen that. Right. So overfitting and underfitting is pretty much important, guys. You should try to learn those things in, in that specific way so that you you know how to actually fix that particular problem itself. Now going to the next step. Next step, you should also understand what will be the impact of that algorithm with respect to imbalanced data set, right? Imbalanced data set. What is imbalanced data set? Suppose you are solving a binary classification problem. One of the classes occurrences is very, very hard. The other class occurrence is very, very less. So how do you handle in that particular scenario, right? In that particular scenario, and that may be with respect to your text data or your normal numerical or category feature, right? It may be based on your class. And this is specifically with respect to classification problem, what I'm actually telling, right? Right. So understand this, that what is the impact of the imbalanced data set and how do you fix that? Definitely in feature engineering, you have techniques like upsampling and downsampling. But with respect to some of the machine learning algorithms, handling imbalanced data set is present in one of the parameters also. You can actually assign some weights, right? Like you can assign some heavier weights to the less number of occurrences of the classes that is present in that data set. So that type of techniques are also there, right? So for that case, you do not handle it uh, separately in the feature engineering section. You can do it directly in the machine learning algorithm part also. So it is pretty much important that you understand the impact of imbalanced data set. Now with respect to regression and classification problem guys, the next step I would say is that try to understand the impact of the outliers. This is also pretty much important. Outliers are something, uh, are those kind of data that does not generally occur when compared to the other data set that is present. It will be completely different, right? And that kind of data set is all will also be available in every data set itself. If I take an example of credit card fraud lend, right? Uh, credit card fraud lend, each and every transaction will not be a credit card fraud lend, right? Some of the some of the fraud lend transaction uh, will be seen in such a way that it, it can also be treated as an outlier, right? So we should know how to handle those kind of scenarios also. And again, guys, I'm telling you, this is from my experience whenever I solve this, but any problem statement, I see all these things and I have basically come up with all these particular steps to learn, right? Next, when you have done this, when you have handled the imbalanced data set, when, uh, when you have handled the outliers, make sure that you also understand whether feature scaling or normalization is actually required with respect to the data set that you have, right? And I always remember guys, each and every machine learning algorithm do not require feature scaling. If I take an example of decision tree, random forest, XG boost, uh, gradient boosting, ADA boost, right? This all algorithms do not require feature scaling. Okay. 
only some of the algorithms which we have like uh, linear regression right logistic regression uh, these all features actually require feature scaling i mean these all algorithms actually require feature scaling so you should also understand when the feature scaling is not required because this is also a very important interview question so you have covered almost everything and by this i think you will be pretty much good in order to solve a machine learning problem statement right and then after you are learning this much just go and solve some particular machine learning problem statement because this all concepts at least covers around 70 to 80 percent and you know 70 to 80 percent how you should actually handle this particular machine learning algorithm practically okay so now you can go and solve any machine learning problem statement now start with now if i specifically go with classification problem guys and i hope you have also understood that we should also try to understand with respect to regression problem statement also so once you are able to do that try to solve a binary classification and a regression problem statement once you are able to solve it once you are able to do a hyperparameter tuning once you are able to play with different regularization parameters the next step is that try to go and see that whether that particular algorithm can be used in order to solve a multi class classification problem or not right because see if i take an example of logistic regression many of you all know that logistic regression is used for binary classification but a person who is much more interested in logistic regression he will also come to know that with logistic regression we can also solve a multi class classification problem right we basically say it as one versus all uh, ovr one versus rest we also say that right so we can also solve a multi class classification similarly in naive bias in naive bias many people know that yes it can be used to solve binary classification problem statement but yes now uh, with different different uh, changes in that particular algorithm we can also solve multi class classification by using multinomial naive bias classifier right so if you have done all those things try to go and solve uh, a multi class classification problem and try to see that whether it is possible by that particular algorithm or not okay and once you have done this again try to solve it in a practical way with respect to multi 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 class classification after that the last and the final thing is that try to understand the time complexities of that particular algorithm now when i say time complexities that basically means that how much time usually it takes you know at least the best case and the worst case you should know at least you keep that particular value in your mind uh, it is always important because if you share this information in your interview time right to the recruiter definitely recruiter knows that you have learned all this particular algorithm step by step and at the end it is a closing statement like you know the time complexity right so pretty much amazing way to actually learn this particular algorithm step by step and this is how you should actually do trust me guys uh, i came to this particular pattern and this pattern was just not done initially by me you know every time i used to uh, you know I, every time i used to revise any machine learning algorithm every time i used to learn some new things so based on that i have covered every points in a proper way over here uh, try to follow this particular patterns and please do let me know whether this particular pattern works for you or not or whether you are learning in this particular pattern trust me if you work in or if you learn in this particular pattern you will be also able to remember it for a longer period of time because it will be fixed in a form of story in your mind right so yes uh, this was all about this particular video i hope you like it please do subscribe the channel if you are not already subscribed i'll see you all in the next video have a great day thank you one and all bye bye